Hello, kindness. Uh, I appreciate your video response, and I took a few notes on uh, what you had uh, presented by way of a uh, refutation. I guess I will take your video as, as, as intending to be a refutation of the idea that the is-ought problem or gap is uh, problematic for theism. And it seems like your central point, I'm going to grab my notes here, it seems like your central point was about one minute into it where you're talking about God's commands being facts. And I was just watching, I'm, I'm just starting to catch up on some YouTube videos right now, and I was just catching another one of your videos where you, you repeat essentially the same idea that um, God's commands are facts. Um, this is erroneous. This actually, this is an error, I believe, on your part. Let me... Uh, explain why and, and maybe how a little bit that's um, that's not accurate. Um, the a, a simple declarative statement such as the cat is orange. Um, I say a tabby cat, the cat is orange. That's a descriptive statement. Um, a moral command would be um, if you uh, take out the garbage, for example, take out the garbage, John. Now, there's a fundamentally different sense and meaning and um, grammar for the descriptive and the, the other one would be called the prescriptive. So there's an essential difference between descriptive and prescriptive. So if God's giving a command in the command form, then it's a prescriptive, not a descriptive. That's a, that's a key point, and I will certainly come back to that um, in future videos. You're welcome to um, talk about, maybe uh, respond to that in some fashion. However, I, I think the best that you'll come up with is that it's a fact that a command was given. But let's say the fact that a prescriptive was given, a command was given, that's not the same thing as the command form, the prescriptive uh, itself, the injunction itself. So that's what we're talking about. Um, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, which God commanded to the Israelite nation. That's a prescriptive. That's not a descriptive. Okay? Um, just so we're on the same page there. Um, let me uh, talk about, let's see, you also talked, and about two minutes into it, you talked about how both theists and atheists presuppose morality. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, um, essentially. I think maybe we would come to different conclusions um, about that. About two minutes and 45 minutes, excuse me, two minutes and 45 seconds into your video, you talk about God being contradictory. So now you're taking a little different strategy, you're adopting a different strategy, talking about how God um, himself is contradictory, and how um, he, one of the examples that you offered um, doesn't seem like a very, um, it doesn't seem like reasonable evidence in support of your uh, conclusion there. Um, oh, looks like a door shutting, the lighting's a little changing a little bit here. Um, that was about in uh, the book of Genesis, where um, uh, they are a uh, God is giving a, a issuing a command to find out um, what's going on in a particular area. And of course, if God is omnipresent and omniscient, then He would know uh, what's going on in a particular place at a particular time. He would know exactly those um, numbers. Um, that is certainly not showing how God is contradictory. I, I, I think you would have to provide further argumentation uh, for that point if, you're, if, if that's the evidence that you're trying to use to establish that conclusion. Um, that could e very easily have been um, God doing that for that individual's benefit. So they would go down and actually determine it themselves. We find a lot of examples in the scriptures where people just don't believe God. As a matter of fact, the Abrahamic covenant, uh, which is established and reestablished or renewed several times throughout the book of Genesis in the Old Testament uh, demonstrates very plainly uh, that Abraham needs further reinforcement that God is trustworthy, that Yahweh is going to make good on his word, and that he's going to make many nations out of his seed. Uh, so, <clears throat> 
I don't think that a step that the the the, the, uh, op, the example that you offered up uh, is really good evidence that God's contradictory. Then you talk in about a little after three minutes. You talk about oxymorons. I don't know if you use that actual term. Um, an oxymoron uh, would be something where two words put together uh, make nonsense. They they seem to cancel one another out. Um, sometimes this this has a humorous effect. So it's not not as though the speech act there, there's no speech act significance to an oxymoron. There's there may be lots of speech act significance, <laughs> um, but you offer up the example of criminal justice. Here again, I think you may be mistaken because criminal justice has a specific connotation. It has a definite use and purpose, and it's not contradictory. Criminal, criminal combined with justice do not cancel each other out because why? What was what would be important? Context in the context where we would um, contrast civil justice with criminal justice or action. So there could be a civil action versus a criminal action. So in that sense, there's a specific type of justice, certain standards that would be used to prosecute criminals as opposed to uh, merely civil affairs um, that would not involve actual violations of a law or code. Um, I have not covered everything in your uh, video. I've responded to some points. Um, I will uh, I will look for your comments below. Maybe we can um, have a little bit more of a written uh, discussion, though, about particularly about that issue, whether God's commands would be uh, facts. Uh, thank you very much, and, and you have a, a wonderful day, uh, Kind Avenue.